Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to talk about what is a D365 data entity. Data entities are our primary way for outside systems to interact with data within D365, whether that be reading data or writing data. So to give you a few examples, maybe you are just implementing D365 and you've got all this legacy data in a legacy system and you need to use the data management framework um, to bring in um, data from your uh, legacy system into this system. So you need a lot of data that you're loading, items, customers, etc. You can do that using data entities. Another example is maybe you've got a website that needs to be able to create sales orders within D365 or export out items and prices and customers to that website. Data entities help us do all of that. Data entities are a little different than the way we normally interact with data in D365. Normally, you're a user, you're able to open a browser, and you can log in um, using your credentials. Those credentials are tied to a user, which has security roles that determine which forms you can open. Those forms have data sources that interact with the underlying tables, and you can read, edit, uh, insert, delete that data. With data entities, we've got a little bit of a different mechanism for interacting with that data because oftentimes you're not going to be um, a user logging into a browser. You've got some outside system that's got an automated process or needs to be able to call D365 in an API fashion. Um, to interact with the data. And so that's one of the key pieces to understand with data entities is it provides authorized access for these outside systems. You wouldn't wanna open up all these tables to the outside systems. This allows you to control which tables um, you can uh, interact with from outside D365. The second component that I wanna touch on is that uh, data entities provide an understandable format or interface in which we can interact with the data in D365. If I look at this customer form within D365, it actually has a lot of data sources underneath. We've got our main cust table, then we've got all these addresses, and the addresses have about six different tables that all make up creating a particular address. We've got prices, um, so invent table module. Um, there's essentially a bunch of tables that are all um, needed to be filled out to have maybe a complete um, customer. I guess invent table modules for items, but you get the idea. There's a lot of tables um, in this customer form. And so that's great um, for databases. Databases are going to work a lot faster when we have the table split out. They use up less space because we're only related, creating related tables when we need to. Um, however, for something like an outside system, it's confusing. They'd have to know um, the relationships between those tables. Uh, they'd have to be able to generate rec ID relationships to set this up. Um, so it becomes way more difficult for an outside system um, to insert data. And so data entities actually are a mechanism for kind of essentially flattening that data. And so we can see as an example here, if we have a customer entity, it's a single entity that's gonna have a bunch of fields. I'll show you what that looks like in Visual Studio in a second, but it's gonna have all these different fields across maybe a number of different tables, um, but the outside system doesn't care. They just see those fields. They know if they populate those fields and send them in, D365 um, is gonna be smart enough to then insert all these related records and set up those relationships for us. So that understandable format is extremely helpful. And the same goes when we're reading data. So in order to read a customer out, um, the system knows it's gonna have to join to all these tables, pull those fields together and then export it. But um, we as that outside system don't need to know that. Um, so those are really the key pieces I'd say with data entities is the authorized access to outside systems 
and the readable format. Let's just take a quick look uh, in Visual Studio so you can kind of see what those look like. So if I go to the Application Explorer and I go to Data Model, there's going to be data entities as well as composite data entities. Um, and data entities can also have extensions so you can add to them. So I'm going to look at one called Cus Customer V3 Entity in the Data Entities node. And within this, there's actually a bunch of fields. This is the main thing that I want to look at. These are all the fields that I can either read from or write from all in a very flat format, which is great. Now behind the scenes, a developer has specified all the data sources and those relationships that need to make up those fields. So you can imagine if you were trying to write this every time from scratch, that this would be really complicated. But thankfully, we've got this data entity um, and we can use it to read and write these customers. Similarly, we actually have um, a way that we can create sales orders. Now, sales orders are a little bit more complicated. They require or a composite data entity, which is really just a couple uh, entities put together. We've got one called sales order header that is going to be tied to sales order header v2 entity. And then we've got another one called sales order line, which is tied to sales order line v2 entity. And then I can look at those individual entities by searching in the data entities field and I've already opened those up. So similarly, again, we've got our sales order header. It's got all those fields flattened out for us. And then we can see that there's a whole bunch of data sources even within it. I could drill deeper and deeper into some of these. Similarly, a sales order line has all these fields flattened out for us, which is really nice but they all can come from different data sources and data fields kind of drilled in from here. Um, so that's really powerful concept of data entities. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the other kind of use cases for data entities. And so there's um, some good picture right here in Microsoft's documentation. And so essentially some common integration scenarios to use data entities. One is called OData. This makes for an API interface um, for outside systems. They can call that, um, again, pull data, read data more ad hoc. Another common scenario is to use a file import. So whether you've got um, Excel or CSV, that type of thing, you can have the system look at a folder, load a particular file, um, you know, read it, load it in D365 kind of, or vice versa. So file integration is definitely really helpful. And then thirdly, common situation is using business intelligence. You can use data entity to export um, data for reporting purposes for use in Power BI, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> so one thing, if you're using data entities for OData, I do have an article called Setup Postman to call D365 data entities. It kind of shows you how to set this up, how to get authorized access. I'll scroll through real quick. You can kind of look at this, but then at the end, you can actually get out this data in a JSON format. So again, really helpful for outside systems to interact using these common technologies um, and formats um, of working with data. Okay, moving back, one other case as well is um, just in your application lifecycle management. So again, common to use this data management um, uh, workspace, which you can find by either searching for data entity and then going to that data management workspace, or you can find it under workspaces here. But here you can actually see different data entities that have been deployed, work with these, work with different jobs that are going to use this. This is especially helpful when you're first loading data, um, but also helpful for common integration tasks. Um, so that's really it for now. Um, what I really want to get to is to show you how to create a data, data entity and develop one. Um, but before we could do that, I really needed to explain what a data entity is, when you're going to use it, how you're going to use it, how those are different uh, in interacting with data versus forms. So stay tuned for our next article. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. 
If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.